Welcome to Lofty Pursuits and Public Displays of Confection in Tallahassee, Florida. I'm Greg, and today we're going to make the Frankenstein monster in candy. Because he can be sweet when he wants to. So come join us as we make an Abbey Normal candy. Curry has pulled the hot sugar, and he's already flavored it. Apple cider flavor, a great Halloween flavor. And he's going to make the head of the Frankenstein monster in candy. A few years ago, my version of this design was the full figure of the monster. And I took it to a competition, a bodybuilding competition, and I realized I completely misunderstood the objective of that competition. So for now, Uri is just going to keep ahead on candy production. He is working the food coloring into the hot sugar. He's doing this by stirring because the food coloring it has some water in it, and if we leave the water, the water will make the candy sticky, but the heat of the sugar itself will take that food coloring to a boiling point and drive all the water off. A thermal mass can be a wonderful thing. The white powder he just put on is citric acid, which gives the candy a little zest, but this is actually the sweet half. This is part of our treat assortment. This candy actually comes in two bags, a trick bag and a treat bag, one sweet and one sour. And we sell them together on our website, www.pd.net. And you can get it there and try it for yourself. While everything has the same flavors, the colors are different. The colors have to be cut apart into their component colors, and then the temperature needs to be evened out. Uri's running a little hot with this candy because there's a lot of parts and we don't want the candy to get too cold before the end. So right now the work's a little harder at the beginning than at the end to make this work. The white candy isn't white enough and it'll also be a solid piece of candy. We want to get air bubbles in it, both for the appearance, it makes it whiter, it reflects light, like the bubbles on the top of a glass of Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola isn't white, but the bubbles are because the round bubbles reflect light back randomly. Well, we want to do the same thing with candy. And the microscopic bubbles, well, they do another thing. They make the candy dissolve faster in the mouth, just a little bit at the right spot, so you get an extra burst of flavor. It's one of the reasons our candies taste so good. Every time he folds the candy, he's trapping thousands of air bubbles in the candy. And these air bubbles take up space. When he's done, the candy will be about 20% larger than when he started. I guess between the added volume and all the exercise, there's definitely bodybuilding going on. We'll give Mary Shelley a run for her money before this is all over. When making candy, you always start with the most important details first. That way they'll be cooler and less likely to distort. In this case, we're going to start with the eyes and the mouth. The face of the monster is going to be light green, and I know it doesn't look very light green on the camera, but that seems to be an affectation of the video camera, and not of the candy itself. Uri is pulling some white into some transparent green to speed up the process. He could do all of this on the hook, but it's a little faster to do here, and he's going to be using this as the background for the face. We talk about our candy being Victorian heart candy, and we do this because most of the equipment and most of the designs were made during the life of Queen Victoria. That would have been between 1837 and 1901. Normally that's as far back as our story goes. But Mary Shelley, she wrote this book in 1918, before Queen Victoria went on the throne. So not only is this the first book of science fiction ever written, this book would be a Regency novel. I guess we're bringing it more up to date with some Victorian technology. This bit is going to be the mouth, and sort of with a half smile or sneer on him.
This is a complicated eye. It's made in three distinct parts. The pupil, the iris, and the outline. The wonderful side effect of this design is when you hold it up to light when it's done, the eyes will glow green. Frankenstein's monster came by his left hand honestly, but his right hand came from a second-hand store. And because of this, you can tell he was built out of lots of parts. And the eyebrows are going to show this. They're not going to match. One is going to be a little spiky, and one is going to be a little cross-hatchy like a wound. And these are both being built individually here, because the Frankenstein monster eschews symmetry. We have the eyes, check. We have the mouth, check. We have the eyebrows, check. It's time for assembly. <laughs> I'd like to thank our Patreon subscribers for supporting us. It lets us do videos like this and other oddball projects, as well as our podcast, which you can download wherever podcasts are listened to. And of course, you can follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And as long as you're here, don't forget to subscribe to us on YouTube and ring the little alerts button so that we can let you know when we come out with a new video. The hardest part about all of this is actually the padding. Not only do we have to make all the different components of the face, we have to make sure they stay in the right place. Thank you.
Now that the head is assembled, it needs an outline, and it needs its hair to be added. Its hair is just a thicker bit of the outline. These four pieces of white sugar are going to be the spacers separating the face from the outline on the outside of the candy. And then with the green wrap, the candy is done. But we only have one piece, and we need thousands. To do this, we're going to scale the candy. And for that, we're going to taper it down, take off the end that we sell in the store, calling it a unicorn dropping. And we're going to put it on our batch roller, where we're going to be able to taper it down into hundreds of rods of candy from one giant log. And now it's time to take these rods and bring them into bite-sized bits. And we use our candy anvil, a canvil to us. And here is our little monster, and I'm sure Mary would be proud, as would Dr. Frankenstein. So thank you for watching. You can try this candy for yourself. You can get it at www.pd.net. It's part of a two-pack assortment. Our store is located in Tallahassee, Florida, right off I-10 by the Thomasville Road exit. If you ever come by, we'd love for you to visit. We're open seven days a week. We only make candy some of the times, and if you're lucky, you can get it to see us make it in person. So thank you again for watching, and we'll see you in the next video. Oh, and yeah, I can't resist it.